Yeah, so that awesome sound is coming from our Wii U. It started happening a couple days ago, but it was still working, and now all of a sudden we get invalid disk. So, guess we're going to have to take it apart and see what it is. To start, you got to take off these little rubber plastic pads that cover the screw holes. Uh, once revealed, you can take the screws out. There are a lot of screws. Some of them are tri-wings and some of them are Phillips. If you don't have a tri-wing, I use a small flat head and I can kind of jam it in there and still get enough torque to get it out. So once you get all the screws out, you take off the battery cover here. And then we can get a little panel on the side and you slide it backwards and then it pops up like so and that reveals you guessed it more screws there's three more tri-wing screws here that we have to take out there they are once you get those out of there, the cover just comes up kind of the same way. Those little rubber grommet handhold feet thingies there, they uh, are in, wedged in between those two halves of the case. So you can see one is still in there in the top left, the other one uh, came off of the top half. Now we see the uh, disk drive and some of the other internals, hard drive, fans, CPU, stuff like that. There's a couple of screws on the front that actually hold the front disc loading part on that has the eject and the power button. Uh, it's attached with a ribbon cable. I hate ribbon cables and I'm always afraid of breaking them so I like to take them off. So I popped this one out and then later I realized it's uh, pretty handy in troubleshooting to leave it attached because the eject button is actually electronic on this one. It's not a physical button like on some older type machines. Uh, take the cover off the disk drive and there we have the internals. There's another cover guide plate on here with three screws. I'm going to take those off so I can see what's going on inside. So I have an idea that it has to do something with the drive motor. Uh, I did find out that the ejecting and retrieving mechanism only works if that top guide plate is on. So let's find out. Yep, that's awful. So I think it has to do something with the drive motor or the guide bushing, something along those lines. And like I said before, the only way to get the disc out once you get it in is to reconnect that front of the tray part with the ribbon cable so that the eject button works. And there we go. Eventually I just leave it in. So we're going to take out the disc unit, the drive itself. Um, it's connected in the back here with a ribbon cable. If you have to replace your whole drive, you want to start by doing this, taking off this ribbon cable. It's got a part that snaps up. Once you get it to pop up, then you need to kind of lift up the other side. And once that comes up, you should be able to get the ribbon cable out. You got a monkey with it a little bit. It's a little awkward, the angle that you have here. I find it best to leave the drive on the table and turn the whole console on its side. Uh, for this part Same with putting it back together. That's kind of the easiest way to do it So once we get that off, I'm going to take the drive apart. There's four screws Phillips uh, guide screws that hold this together They got a collar on them and then some threads underneath that are different So once you get those four off then you can pop it out of the tray and there's the back of it So again, my thought is something to do with the drive motor here. It's a little tiny motor uh, and look at that. Uh, I found some hair in it. Great thing about having three girls and two dogs in the house, hair gets everywhere. I used to question how it would end up in something like a drive, but I don't anymore. So let's try it out. Maybe that was the cause. If I can get it to take the disc. Let's see.
yeah, it still sounds awful. It seemed to have spun longer for some reason, but it still sounds awful. Still invalid disk. So I'm going to take it back out. And my guess this time was it was still, still something to do with that motor. So this time I'm going to take the motor out. Once I get it over the back, there are three Torx screws that hold it in and one more awesome ribbon cable. Uh, I didn't have a Torx uh, standalone driver small enough for this, so I had to use this multi-tool, which sucked. Uh, so it is a T6 size. So if you have to replace the drive motor, I would recommend getting a handled T6. You can kind of see that there's three springs that are go underneath it. And look at, I'm unwinding yet some more hair. Now those three springs are actually crucial to it that the drive motor sits on it. Yeah, there's the hair. Nice. Yeah, you can see it. So I put it all back together, and what I didn't know was how much to torque those down. So I went pretty far with them. I uh, got it pretty tight. Put the ribbon cable in. Yeah, eventually got the ribbon cable in. Yeah, okay. Nope, first I'm messing with this tool. Yeah, again, it sucked. Ribbon cable, back in the tray. Screws back in. Ribbon cable back in. Cover back in. Load it up. Let's see. Had to be those hairs, right? Oh, nothing this time. Well, it turns out by torquing those down too far, the motor actually was too tight, too much friction, and couldn't engage. You see there, after I loosened them up a little bit, I made sure that they had a little spring to them. Let's try it again. Nope, no better. So now what I'm going to do is loosen that yoke arm with that little plastic kind of bushing, bearing type thing that's in it. Loosen that up a little bit and I see that there's actually a lot of adjustment to it, a lot of movement to it. It's supposed to be right over the center of the drive motor, hold the disc in place. So my guess is it's off a little bit, causing a little wobble or friction. So I loosen it up and I'm going to put the game back in. Now I used a game that I don't really care much for. So I wasn't afraid of damaging it. However, later my daughters told me that they were upset if I had ruined it or would be upset. Oh, listen to that. Nice and smooth. So I'm going to try and tighten that yoke arm up. Oh, little noise. Let's loosen that back up. Okay. So my guess is when I was tightening it down there, it shifted a little off of where it's centered. So I'm going to tighten it up a little ways here to kind of hold it in place. A little noise there, a little rub. Let's back it off just a little bit. Alright, now let's eject the disc. And now, with my one finger, I'm going to hold it in place, and then I'm going to tighten it down. Let's see if that's going to work. I always find it's best to recheck things over and over and over again as you put it back together. That's the sound of a pug in the background. That is not the disc drive. It's nice and smooth. All right, let's see if it reads though. Yep, it read. Let's make sure it works. Yeah, there you go. It's working just fine. Great. Unfortunately, I can't dance right now without the Wii Mote, so. Your loss. All right, let's put the cover back on, tighten it back down, and then again, let's make sure it works. So we'll put the disc back in. We'll try it again. Still working, still reading. That's good. Never know when you put that cover back on if you had, uh, you know, pinched something, uh, pulled a cable out. I've done this all before, put it all back together, and found out that I left a wire on, loose on something. So get it back together, put all those screws back in, the tri-wings, the Phillips, and then you know what? Once we get it all back together, but before I put those little rubber covers back on, let's, uh, let's try it one more time. Yep, still working, still reading. Alrighty. Put those little covers back on. Find it easy just to do with the X-Acto blade. 
And then the most important thing, the thing that led to all this trouble, was that the girls couldn't play Minecraft, so it became an emergency. So, Just Dance works. But let's make sure we didn't damage the most important game. So hook it back up where it goes. And, yep, Minecraft. There you go. Save the day.